Working from home is all of the rage since COVID and employees are beginning to ask if I can work remotely why don't I move to a smaller city and buy the same house for less money. If you're looking to move here's all you need to know about getting a mortgage in a new city. Thanks for watching. If you're watching this on YouTube, don't forget to hit subscribe below. All of the ad revenue that we get is donated to local New Zealand charities. So you're looking to move and you want to know about buying a house in the new city. The bank will have a couple of questions that they want to know specifically related to this scenario. The first one is, do you think you're going to sell your current house? And if not, are you going to rent it out? Secondly, if you're employed, are you going to stay with your current employer and work remotely? Or are you going to need to find a new job in this new city? And if you're self-employed, how does moving cities affect your business? If you're all online, it's not going to affect it at all. If you've got local clients who you rely on, then your business is going to be impacted severely by this move and the bank will want to understand this. Okay, so if you're looking to sell your current property, what is the timeline for that? Are you going to be able to sell your property before you move? Or are you going to need some bridging finance to see you through the new purchase before you sell your old property? The bank will want some explanation around this. And in all honesty, the easiest outcome for finance is that you sell your property or at least have an unconditional offer on your property before you have to settle on the new property. It's much easier for the bank to give you bridging finance if you've got an unconditional offer on your property. That way they know exactly the day you're going to sell your old property and they can fund you the crossover time in the meantime. Remember, the new LVR rules are in place at all of the banks. So if you're going to keep your current property, you can only borrow up to 70% of that property and 80% of the new property. There are some mortgage lenders that will lend you 80% on your investment property and 80% on your owner occupied property, but they're one or 2% more expensive than the main banks. So bear that in mind. On the income side, if you tell the bank that you are staying with your current employer, the bank is going to want to see some sort of confirmation around this in written form from your current employer. A confirmation that says that the employer understands that you will be working remotely and that is fine and there is no impact to your income. If the employer requires that you travel to their office for a couple of days a week or once every fortnight, the bank will want to build in some sort of travel costs and that will add a couple of hundred dollars to your expenses per month. But at the end of the day, you've probably moved to a smaller city and reduced your mortgage. So hopefully that added expense will net out as the same. If you're not comfortable talking to your employer at this stage about moving, you can apply for a mortgage and ask for a condition to be put on the letter of offer that your employer confirms in writing that you can move. Now, this is quite acceptable to the banks, but bear in mind, you can't go unconditional on your new property in the new city until you've ticked that off. You want to make sure your employer will put in writing that you can move and you can work remotely. So tick that off before you go unconditional on any property, but you can get some sort of estimate from the bank on what you can borrow without necessarily getting a letter from the employer. If you're going to be moving jobs into a new city, you're going to need to have a contract in place and signed by the new employer before you can get that money from the bank. The banks can only work with provable income. So just saying, you know, income is really easy in these new cities. It won't be a hassle for me to find a job isn't going to tick the bank's criteria. You're going to need to show them that contract, which will show them exactly what you're getting paid and when you start. If you have a significant amount of equity, and by that I mean about 40% equity or more, so you're borrowing no more than 60%, you might be able to get a non-bank lender to give you a temporary mortgage that pays for the new property, even though you can't prove your income. 
but you would only do this if you were very sure you were going to get income in the new city because the rates that these non-bank lenders charge for an asset only lend is up around the 8 to 12 percent per annum now if that's only for three months that's just the cost of doing business but if you're stuck on that rate that is going to add up particularly because you're stuck on that rate because you don't have income so think very carefully about that strategy but it is one that you can follow at the end of the day any costs that are incurred in moving cities are a cost of doing business so if you sell your current house and have to rent for a short amount of time before you buy because you couldn't get bridging finance or if you go to a second tier lender and have to pay a higher interest rate for a small amount of time these might add up to five or ten thousand dollars extra but that is a cost of moving Put it this way, if you bought a house for 900000 and there was an additional cost of 10000 would you pay $910,000 for that house? The answer is, of course, you usually would. It's a cost of doing business. It's added 1% on to the cost of your house, and you've found the house of your dreams in this new city. Just sometimes people can focus on those fees. You know, if it costs them $10,000 to move, it's not really worth it. It's all too much hassle and they don't do it. There is a cost to moving and there is a cost to changing houses. But if you are increasing your lifestyle and getting more house for the same amount of money or the same house for less money, it might just be worth it for you. If you'd like to read our article on this, just search Mortgage Lab Moving Cities and you'll find it. Thanks for watching. Cheers.